Yo, what is up guys? It's Pedro here and today's video will be giving you guys a recap of day seven of the Washington Commanders training camp and there we had the first fight of training camp. Also have a big announcement to make so stay tuned for that. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button and that notification bell as well so you never miss a video. Guys, the announcement is I created a Discord server, so go ahead, join it. First link in the description. It's going to be a way for you guys to connect with me, also connect with each other. There's going to be a whole different community out there. You guys will be able to suggest videos, other stuff as well. So first link in the description, and yeah, go ahead and join, and I'll talk about it at the end of the video. Okay, so day two of pads, I believe day seven of the Commander's Training Camp could be day eight, might be mistaken, but... Let's get into it. So we had the first fight of training camp. It wasn't a huge one, but a little bit of a tussle between Cody Barton, Khalid Hudson, and Nick Gates. Punches were thrown, separated quickly. Apparently, I think Cody Barton was the one with um, the punches. A little bit more of a breakdown here by Sam Fortier. Uh, he said, uh, shoving. Khalid Hudson seemed to take exception to a block on the perimeter by Nick Gates. So he shoved Gates, who pushed Hudson's helmet and started shoving with uh, linebacker Cody Barton. And there were, you know, some punches thrown. Broke up pretty quick. Tear McLaurin, a peacemaker. And, you know, you don't like to see fights all the time, but it's good to have a fighter. I mean, not good necessarily, but like it's okay to have a fighter too. It shows that, you know, these guys are passionate. And Nick Gates is the perfect, perfect example of someone who you love to have on your team, but you would hate to play against. Like kind of like a Patrick Beverly type player where like he's gonna stand up for your, you know, his teammates and he's gonna be a little bit not a bully, but kind of, and he's gonna be annoying to the other team, but for you, he's gonna be a warrior and he's gonna protect every single one of the offensive linemen next to him and players next to him. Like if, if someone messes with Sam Howe, best believe Nick Gates is gonna be there to defend the quarterback and you know I, I you know from afar I always kind of liked him and kind of hated him at the same time and now he's on the team um, I think it's going to be cool as long as he's good it'll be pretty cool but just a little bit of a tidbit there with a fight some other news not so good Sadiq Charles another injury he's not he was not practicing today in team drills or you know 77 99 11 v 11 dealing with the calf injury Chris Paul is playing a left guard so I'm after this, you know, unless he's back tomorrow or the day after, kind of done with him. Like, because, you know, people have been, some people, not a lot. There's been a lot of people that haven't, but there's been some people hyping him up, like, oh, you know, he hasn't had a chance. He's always been hurt, blah, blah, blah. You know, let's see what he can do if he's actually healthy. Well, the thing is, he actually has had a chance. Like, his first year, yeah, he had the concussions and the calf injury, didn't, you know, wasn't able to play much. But, like, he definitely had chances before, and he just didn't play well. Like, last year he started, I think a, maybe he started a game or two. I know the year before he did. I, yeah, I think that he started. He might have started for, like, Norwell or Turner at one point. But he, he just wasn't that good. I mean, he was okay at times, but he got his, you know, fair shot of opportunities. Maybe not to start from the get-go, like, you know, from the start of the offseason. But he started games before, and, you know, it wasn't just because he's been getting injured – that you know he hasn't worked you know it hasn't worked out because if he when he played and he played amazing we would be looking at him a lot differently we'd be like okay if he could stay healthy this guy could be a really good guard for kind of like benjamin st juice like we've seen him play well we've seen him be a really good not yeah a good cornerback in this league potentially be great but the problem with him is injury but we've seen him play well we haven't really seen that with the deep trials so I don't know. I really think they should have had a, you know, signed a veteran guard because even if Chris Paul's good, I mean, you cannot depend on a second year, seventh round rookie that played half a game last year, maybe played the whole game. I'm not completely sure. You need a veteran behind him. I know Mason Brooks, I think that's his name from Oklahoma or wherever he's, you know, from. He's been playing well, but that's an undrafted free agent rookie. So. I would saw, sign the guy, what's his name, Dalton Reisner or whatever, the guard that's on the market. There's some other guys as well. Eric Flowers is still out there, but there's got to be a reason Eric Flowers is available because he played really well for the Commanders when, or he, he played well. He was a good guard in this league, and we released him and no one signed him. So it's either he's done with football or he wants a lot of money and won't sign unless he gets a lot of money. So that it could be both those situations, but... Yeah, we need. We I think we need to sign another guard because Sadiq Charles. You cannot depend on him, even if he plays well. You cannot depend on him staying healthy. And I just this left guard situation just not great. And here's the thing: 
with a D line, you can survive with three good guys and a ter- not terrible, but I mean still yeah terrible, but three good guys and a bad starter or two or one elite guy, one good guy and two not so good guys. Offensive line, it's totally different because again in the D line, if one of them gets the QB, it's you're all good. Or if you have one guy that's getting double teamed and there's another good guy, they'll be able to get to the quarterback. But offensive line. If one of the guys blocks a mate, you know, well, well, that could all be for nothing if one of the guys is bad and misses the block. That is what's bad about the offensive line. Like, you don't need to have elite guys on the offensive line. Like, would it be nice to have Trent Williams? Yes. Would it be nice to have Tristan Wirfs, Quentin Nelson, Zach Martin? Of course. But if you have everyone on your O line as like a below average to above average guy, so at the worst, your guy's like maybe like slightly below average at his position. And then at best, the guy's like above average, like maybe top 10, top 15 or whatever at his position. Then you're good. But if you have two elite guys and then two okay guys and a really bad guy, like it, I mean, you can do things, I guess, to like protect a little bit. But at, at some point, it's just, it, it, you just can't have it. So we need to find a solution here. And even if Chris Paul looks good, I still think we need to sign under the guard. Let's keep going. So they went a little longer today. I mean, they were done at like, they finished like 1130. So definitely were longer than usual today. And I could think they start like at nine or something. So definitely longer than usual, but hey, that's good. It's not that hot. So they're able to do that. But the last period was kickoff and the returner mix, Gibson, Pringle, Kazmir Allen, and Dax Millen. So I mean, the receiver battle is very interesting because it's going to come down to who is retu- who's the returner. Or, yeah, who's the returner? Is it going to be Mitchell Tinsley, which probably not, Dax Milne, maybe, Byron Pringle, Kazmir Allen? Like, who is it going to be? You know, Gibson can always do it. He sh- at, like I feel like, I don't know, Gibson was good, but he, a little bit riskier. You know, he didn't fumble last year, but he always got that in the back of your mind. And then also, he dropped like two kicks last year. And I think one we ended up starting at like the 15 or 18, which is not great, but it was okay. But then another one, he started at like the five, and that just kills your drive. So um, I don't know about Gibson. Pringle, I, I can't remember how much he's done in the past, but he's probably fine. Casimir Allen would be good. And then, again, the kick returns this year. I think you can fair catch. So kick returns not very important. So... Punt returns the more important one, and we'll see what happens there. But that's one of the biggest battles in training camp this season. Let's go. So Lionel uh, William says, Mason Brooks continuing to stand out in 1v1s. F.E. Obata has no answer for him. And, hey, that's really, really impressive. If he's a, you know, rookie undraft free agent and he's holding his own against F.E. Obata, which, okay, is F.E. Obata the best player in the world? No. But he's like, what, six, seven-year veteran, and he – had like five-ish sacks last year. Like he's a solid player in this league. He's a solid contributor in this league. And for an undraft free agent to be dominating him already, and I heard some other good things about him today and yesterday, he was dominating. I can't remember who it was. I can't remember who it was, but it was someone like that was, that he should not have been dominating. I can't remember who it was, but he did well. So yeah, I mean, I think that he has a chance to make this roster. And hey, if Sadiq Charles is injured or isn't looking good i'm 100 percent fine cutting him if you feel good about mason brooks if you really feel good about mason brooks this guy also said maybe daniels needs to be moved inside a guard they're working him out to at tackle and then eventually gonna move him to guard and then the, you know they're using a little bit of the eric or the eric sorry andy reed offense there with the shovel and from how samuel saw they wanted they had one from how to logan thomas as well so you know sprinkling sprinkling in a little bit of that you know kansas city flair there which is good and hey hopefully the red zone offense is better okay real quick play by play and you know didn't do any highlights today but here's a couple right there uh jahan dotson and terry let's see that that's the only one that he had but i'm gonna go ahead and read this so uh, Forbes blitzed on you know on a play in 11 v 11 forcing the overthrow from hal terry was open uh, t- uh, Howell's four for five with completions too. You guys can see that right there. I'm just trying to go through a little bit quicker the b- the big plays. I'll go ahead and talk it about talk about it a little bit more. Samuel, you know, makes a contested catch from Howell working against St. Juiced, 
And then uh, Forbes shows you know much of his length can come in handy. Bowens had a, I don't know, step or yard on him, but Forbes made up ground and forced an incompletion. Christian Holmes, back-to-back days, I guess? Wait, when did he have his other interception? It was recently, so, you know, he had another interception, uh, pass intended for Tinsley. So, hey, those last few guys at the cornerback room are all competing. So, you know, th- these are big plays from Chris Paul is getting to start up or at left guard for the 11v11 period. Not surprising because Sadiq Charles is there. Like, I like that to, like, maybe have that as one of my tweets that I had out there. But it wasn't as big of a deal because Sadiq was out. And let's see. Defense was hype. Jamin Davis and Cody Barton celebrated a stop for minimal gain. I saw that Jamin had a nice play in a run game. And Cody Barton has been pretty good as well. So excited to see what he can do for this defense. And then let's see. Brian Robinson had a nice run. And then Chris Rodriguez had another good run. I think he had a good run yesterday. So shout out to him. And that's kind of it for today's camp. Nothing huge. If you guys have any suggestions for how how I can switch these videos up, let me know. Again, go ahead, join the Discord. Link will be in the description. It's just a way for me to talk to you guys a little bit more. We can build a little bit of a community here and just talk about a bunch of stuff. You know, do some giveaways on there as well. So go ahead, join it. And yeah, peace, guys.